Hello, my English 1B students. I'm at my backyard, and it's a very beautiful day, and it's actually, I don't even think I need my sweatshirt right now. It's, um, it's very warm out. And um, today I want to talk to you about uh, poetry. It's our last, really, it's basically our last discussion about poetry, at least in the academic sense, because you have, in theory, finished your poetry essay, uh, and I thank you for working very hard with these strange conditions, and uh, I'm looking forward to reading the poetry essay. If you haven't been able to finish the poetry essay because of extenuating circumstances, then just send me an email explaining what's going on. I'm sure it's probably related to the uh, COVID-19 crisis that's going on, so that's very understandable. So you have a good, you have a good excuse, but uh, I do want you to finish the, uh, the essay if you have not done so. So uh, I want to share with you a couple of poems that um, we have not yet looked at, and uh, I want you to, in the, uh, in the discussion section on Canvas, I would like you to uh, share your thoughts, share your interpretation and, uh, and I, will, I will share mine as well, not in this video, but maybe in a follow-up video. So uh, here is the first one, and I will have um, on this YouTube video in the, in the down the, below, I will have the, the lines of both poems so you can read them yourself. And, um, uh, but you can find these poems online just by Googling the titles of the. This is uh, Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. So here we go. I'm going to read this one. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. So that is a short poem by Robert Frost, Fire and Ice. In the discussion comments, I would love to know what you think of that poem. Look it over again. Um, what is he talking about? Is it related to anything that's going on in the world today or perhaps in the past? Maybe think of times such as World War II or something like that. Uh, or maybe not. It doesn't have to be historical context. I think there, there's a lot of relevancy to this this poem to today's world. And let's see, what else did I want to read? And we have read this one. This one um, is Hope is the Thing with Feathers. I just wanted to read this one because uh, the next poem that I want you to analyze is about a bird. And there are birds singing right now, so it's very appropriate. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. Let's see. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. That's Emily Dickinson's poem. We talked about that a little bit, uh, that she's using personification, right, to describe hope. And um, that uh, it's not something that's asking for anything in return. Uh, that made me think of this poem by Thomas Hardy called The Darkling Thrush. Uh, so this is a little bit longer. Here we go. I leant upon a coppice gate when frost was specter gray and winter's dregs made desolate the weakening eye of day. The tangled bind stems scored the sky like strings of broken lyres, and all mankind that haunted nigh had sought their household fires. The land's sharp features seemed to be the century's corpse outlent, his crypt the cloudy canopy the wind, his death lament. The ancient pulse of germ and birth was shrunken hard and dry, and 
every spirit upon the earth seemed as fervorless as I. At once a voice arose among the bleak twigs overhead in a full-hearted evensong of joy illimited. An aged thrush, frail, gaunt, and small, in blast-beruffled plume, had chosen thus to fling his soul upon the growing gloom. So little cause for carolings, of such ecstatic sound, was written on terrestrial things, afar or nigh around, that I could think there trembled through his happy good night air some blessed hope whereof he knew and I was unaware. So that's the Darkling Thrush. Thomas Hardy is a poet that, um, that I really admire, and I may have mentioned this before, but way back when, when I was getting my master's, I wrote my master thesis on Thomas Hardy, the poetry of Thomas Hardy, including the Darkling Thrush and other poems, and I wrote almost a hundred pages. I think it was like 98 pages or something, something crazy. Um, but it's been a while since I've really explored that poem. I haven't thought about it until just recently with these current events. And so I would love to know what you think of both of those poems. So we've got a discussion panel that I'm going to open up in Canvas. So feel free to interpret uh, those poems um, to the best of your ability. And also, aside from academic interpretation, just tell me how these poems make you feel. What do you like about them or what do you not connect with? All right, that's it. I will see you guys very soon. Well, if I don't see you soon, at least I'll be reading your essays very soon. Bye.